Welcome back to another photorec.tv critique. This week's theme, people. Just a reminder that I want to thank those people who have submitted their images. As I know, it is difficult to put your work out there in front of everybody and get it critiqued, but as I've said before, it is a great way to improve your photography. And my focus is not on tearing you down and making you feel bad about the images you just captured, but to give you concrete items that you can use next time you're at that scene or the next time you have your camera in hand to think about so that you're getting better photos. Let's get started. Just a reminder, as we get started from each week, I'll be picking my favorite image. That will live for a week on top of the photorec.tv Facebook page as the little cover image. Our first image is coming from Jamie and sent both the raw and the finished JPEG, which you that's perfectly fine to do. You can also send DNGs. You can also send just JPEGs. We'll be happily critique all of it. So I think, Jamie, you've made some great changes here in the JPEG. You have uh, cropped off that random blue shoulder there. You've gotten a little closer. You feel like it warmed it up, made it a little bit punchier. Looks good. Um, this, uh, this looks like a sweet moment. She's got him around the neck in a nice way. She's whispering into his ear. Uh, and we can see just enough of her eye here that, that it looks like she, her mood is very happy. I would love to see a little bit more clue about his mood, and I think this would be a great place for a vertical orientation shot. So if you're shooting this again, get a little bit more. What is he doing? Does he have her around the waist? Is he pushing away? Tell us a little bit more of the story by showing us a little bit more in a vertical composition. But otherwise, I think this is a nice shot. Claire has a, a gorgeous location shot here. Um, just This is such a sweet moment. This seems like it should be in some type of advertisement for something. I don't know. You have what I assume is grandpa, dog, and granddaughter enjoying a beautiful little location. A couple things strike me right away though. One, it feels crooked. It looks like the stream is flowing from left to right, but because of the crookedness, it looks like it's flowing uphill. So I'm going to straighten that. I'm just going to grab my straighten tool. And I'm just going to grab, I'm actually going to use that little girl's hand. It looks like it's almost perfectly outstretched level uh, or close to it, close enough to it. So I can put it somewhere around there. Now, if we notice, her feet are already down in the rocks down here. So we've lost some of her feet, but when we crop it, we really start to lose some. I don't like that, but I really want it to be horizontal. So for now, I'm going to allow that to be, well, that's too much, isn't it? Let's come back a little bit. That looks straighter to me. Now, you really want to be careful. Again, I'm not advocating cropping, um, you know, to fix all issues. Your goal should be to create a nice, balanced, straight level composition straight out of camera. But there are times where if that doesn't happen, then you need to crop to fix things. You should always leave yourself a little bit of room so that you can crop uh, to fix things. All right. Um, now, I really love the framing, especially after I shifted a little bit. So we're kind of, we've got our subjects on the left looking into the empty area on the right where it gets a little bit darker, a little bit less interesting, and that's fine. We've got a lot going on. Uh, so we don't need stuff over on the right-hand side. The other thing uh, we have, and I mentioned this back in the wildlife, is we've got a green cast happening here. So I'm going to try to remove that a little bit, but I also want to bring that little girl, uh, I want to bring her face up. So let's try a little bit of shadow raising. Let's try to warm this up a little. Maybe right around there. Let's bring our exposure up as well. So we're getting, we're very hot back here, but there's not a lot we can do about that. So we're just going to ignore that. Um, let's add a little contrast to make it punchier. Now to fix that girl's face, I'm going to get my local area adjustment tool. I'm going to bring uh, an exposure up. I'm also going to try to warm this up as well. And our bring our shadows up a little bit too. And let's try painting this on here. So our size is good for her face. And let me just try to paint in here a little bit. And we're working on a JPEG here, so we are limited somewhat. And let's get her arm as well. He the the grandfather is better. I think he's getting a lot of sun off the rocks, bouncing off the rocks and onto him because his head, or his sorry, his hat is catching the green and shading his face from that. So that's actually working out very, very nicely. This, I mean, this is fantastic here. Really, really nice. Love the shot, Claire. Just need some work here. 
Uh, and straight out, I mean, shooting this, if, if, what if Claire could return to the spot in this exact moment? What could she do to avoid this green cash? And honestly, there's not a whole lot. Uh, if you had time and you could move our, our subjects around, or if you had somebody with a reflector to try to bounce a little bit of that clean light back up into the girl's face, that could be good as well. But um, I would work here just a little bit more. It's hard to tell if that is um, hair coming over there or just a little bit of something else. So again, I'm just really kind of painting on there. Let's bring that exposure up a little bit more. I think somewhere around there looks pretty good. Let's try warming it a little bit more. And I think that matches. There's still a good green tint there, especially on the top of the arm as well that you could work at taking out. But overall, I think this is pretty nice. If I was being picky, if, if I really wanted this shot, I would also take the green tint out of the dog. I'd remove the saturation some and paint um, to really get that white to be clean and nice white. But a uh, really beautiful place. I hope, Claire, that you can return here and capture some more pictures. Oh, we've got bird and girl. Uh, this is cool because the girl and the bird are making eye contact. Uh, similar to Jamie's picture, we get this random arm creeping in here. You really want to watch out for that. Uh, this is something that as a photographer um, that I feel like I've improved a good bit in the last year, one of the things that's really helped me is watching out for distracting objects creeping into the frame. And if it's a moving object, being patient and waiting half a second or two for that arm to pass through and then taking another shot that would capture it. Uh, so, you know, we could crop in a little bit here. We've got to be careful. I don't want to crop too much of that little girl and I don't want to bring the bird too close to the edge. So somewhere around there, then I'm going to get my, um, what do you call that tool? My spot healing tool. And it always, not always, but it so often chooses a very poor area to sample from. I'm on the clone right now. Um, well, we could switch it over to heal. And it's going to do a pretty good job of fixing. Now that bright spot is a little bit distracting in there. There we go. Now again, if you watch the other ones, you know, if you watch me do that, you can probably look at that area and say, that looks a little funny. But uh, if you're just coming in looking with fresh eyes, you wouldn't notice that. So I've taken that out. Otherwise, it looks, I really like this. You've already done some work to it. I think you've done a nice job. Again, we might have some of that greenish tint on her face as well, but it's not nearly uh, as pronounced as it was in the other shot. Um, and the colors in here and the um, positioning of your subjects. Nicely done. So moving from something that's very bright and colorful to Caroline Farrow's um, cowboy singer, I'm going to call him. This is an interesting shot. I like a lot of the elements. It is a very, very high contrast, very dark shot. I think that's stating the obvious. Uh, let me talk about a couple of things that um, I'd like to see. I'd, we've, we've lost information in this side of the face. Uh, but we've got this little, is this reflecting off the microphone? Something, something is happening there and that's distracting to me. Uh, so I'd like to see that dealt with. You possibly could go in and uh, clone it out a little bit more, possibly. Uh, let's see if we can just get that all black there and see what we think. Now you want to be careful if you're going to be printing or displaying this on other monitors because you, you want to uh, check and make sure that that really, it looks to our eyes in this video as completely hidden, but there may be a, enough of a shift from black to gray that, that would catch your eye once it was printed or displayed on a brighter monitor. So one of the ways you can do that is just kind of temporarily boost the exposure way up and see, uh, and you can see that circle kind of coming out right now where I hid, but under normal circumstances, it seems to go away pretty quickly. Um, the other thing I'm noticing here is 1 80th of a second. He's got some movement in his hands, both his hands. Uh, you know, that actually is kind of neat. It adds a little bit of character, I think, to this image. Um, and I think I'm fine with that. But his head, I wish his head was sharper here. Uh, and I wish the detail in the bright part wasn't lost. So it's okay, kind of one or the other. Um, but because we've, we've got very little detail in the blacks and we've got a large area that, that's white that's blown out as well, it makes it a little bit harder, I think, to kind of connect and, and see the humanness in this. 
I'm going to come down to my effects though and I'm going to use uh, my lens vignette to see if we can get rid of this corner down here. We can't quite, so I might crop that in a little bit. Ooh, you did a lot of cropping already. I just noticed that now. And that's pretty interesting. I wonder if we can do a little bit more, but we're creeping in a little too close to that microphone for my tastes. So I might just come up a little. There we go. And I think that's pretty cool. Going back to the crop tool though, yeah, this is it's interesting. Um, I tell you that that definitely is all distracting there and really changes the feel of this. What is that background? Uh, what is this place that kind of looks like uh, childish and kid-friendly, but then the tone we've got of this singer here. So I think you've done a good job to get rid of all of that. Um, uh, otherwise, it would be a much more kind of confusing image. And I think you've done a nice job. Another cool image that I kind of see peeking out here is the silhouettes of heads um, and with a singer on the stage as well, if there's some way to capture that without that there. We've got um, a shot from Jamie, another one. We're gonna be quick on this one. Uh, you've brightened it up a good bit. We can see the people on the street. This is one of those ones where I have to say, what is the subject? Is it the bricklayers, the two guys working hard? If so, I'd like to be a lot closer to them. I would like to really see what they're doing, what's going on. Um, for example purposes, I'll just crop real quick. Oops, not that much. Um, Somewhere right around there, because I do like that this woman passing by is interested in their work and is kind of connecting with them. So to me, that is a stronger image. We've lost all of that foreground element that just was kind of empty and not really adding anything to it. Um, and we have our two workers and a woman connecting with them. Nice little boy. I like this. Um, I wish you had stepped a half a step to the right so that he is separated from this guy right here. He blends into that guy and we've got this kind of space. You could frame him right there. Speaking of framing, we've got this gentleman painting inside his little paint studio. Jamie traveled with the McKays and myself to Cuba. These pictures are from her Cuba trip and I think she's done a nice job here. Um, this is one of those shots where I say, why stay traditional? If we go to a square, we got this bright spot on his leg and I know you uh, you did fix that some. You really tried to balance the exposure a little bit from the original. But if we come into a square, we can get rid of that. And we can kind of get a more, I was watching not to crop the top of his easel, a more intimate look. Uh, a little bit more of a, we're almost right outside his door, peering over his shoulder in a non-creepy way um, and seeing his work. And we still have enough work around him to really set the frame and the place and we don't have that bright spot distracting us. This is another one, so watch out for intersections. We've got this guy, and he's in the shade, or his back is in the shade, um, and so he is the same kind of color and tone as this telephone pole, and that makes it difficult for us to give space there. So we really wanna watch out for that. If you could have stepped a couple steps to the left and shot up the road, kind of framing him in the road as he's making his way up, I think it would be a stronger image. I think this is a nice shot. Uh, you know, I've said a couple of times about getting a little bit closer and filling the frame with the subject, but I think this has a little bit more story. It shows this place this woman is living um, and existing, uh, and not only the doorway, but the windows and how that all looks. And so I think you've done a nice job here. This looks like Venice, if I had to guess, with gondolas, although I don't, is that a typical gondola guy? He's not wearing the fancy outfit. This is a neat shot. If you've heard me talk before, I talk about getting at eye level and connecting with your subjects. And if you can't do that, offering a really unique level. So I believe this is from a bridge looking straight down into the kind of gondola or push boat. And I really like that. I wish we were a bit more centered and our subject here is just so barely nicking the edge of the frame. Uh, there is a tiny bit of room, or not, well, not our hair though, um, and that bothers me. I'd like to see a more deliberate centering, and I can crop in a little bit to make it more symmetrical. Looks like you've done that already, but as you can see that we start to um, quickly cut off our pole pusher's uh, head if we do that. Otherwise, I think this is a nice shot, and um, I would bring, I'd actually bring the exposure down a little bit, 
and bring those highlights down just a little bit more on the boat. They're just a little bright and we bring it down some and we start to catch the detail there. Let's bring those shadows up so that the front of our push polar looks just as good and still want to keep it a little bit punchy. It also looks to me like I, I would like this a little bit more. Oh, I see the part of the bridge that we were standing on. But then again, if we do that more, so this feels straighter to me, but then of course we are uh, nicking our subject a little bit more. So I would like in the future to really watch that and be careful um, about our edges. We have death proof media, I can tell from his watermark, um, on stage singing. So this is cool emotions, nice framing. I like that we got a, another, uh, you know, the guitarist or somebody else part of the band in the background. It's part of the subject, looks good. I would, um, I like PowerPoint third and third, it's nicely framed, all very good. The, this And this is a tri tricky in concert photography. You're working with some crazy lights and you can have some really different colors. Obviously, we've got a lot of yellow here. we got a lot of blue in the background. I would try to bring this in a little bit closer to human skin tones. And so overall, I'm just going to um, cool it down a little bit, just a little. And then I might, with the brush again, uh, do a local area adjustment that... Um, brings down those highlights a little and cools it even a little bit more. That's a little too much. We don't want to watch out your highlights that you're not going into the gray zone um, with highlights or shadows. But I think that's an improvement there. And I don't have any other suggestions. Maybe actually, let's bring it in just enough that we're not getting that blue drum and blue there that's catching my eye. That back there is okay, kind of frames him. And this light to that, very nice, really nice composition. And you've got a second one, much less colorful. Um, and pose, gaze, all very, very good. The only thing that is an issue here for me um, is, you know, he is similar to me in that we have very pronounced brow ridges uh, and so or sunken eyes, as, as you know the way you might say it. So with the lighting system being very much up above, uh, it's a lot of the shadows here. So I've been using this brush a lot. Let me show you another tool. We, I use the gradient tool, a gradient circle tool on people's faces from time to time. Uh, it's a pretty quick way to, and it fades out so nicely that it often works. In this case, the brush probably would be best because we really only want to fix this area. But what we're trying to do is really boost those shadows. Wait, not, don't worry about those highlights so much. Bring them down a little bit. We're trying to even out um, our area in here and not have those eye areas so dark. And let's get our brush tool as well. And let's just go to our exposure and raise it and brush it. So I think that's an improvement. Let's see what it looked like before and after. Just a little bit more make the eyes pop. They come out a little bit more, not quite as drastic. Now I've got the shot from Nat and this illustrates how tricky skin tones can be. And you've actually look, be completely honest with you, off camera, I've been working on this image a little bit, see if I can get it someplace where I'm very happy. First, let's critique the image. I think this is nice. We have a good exposure here. I could brighten it up in a second a little bit. Um, and uh, really nice smiles. All of that's good. I don't have a lot of critiquing about that. We do have this bit of curtain here that because it comes in and out at an angle does distract me a little bit. So I would, I would try to crop and see if we can get rid of that. And then to be fair, let's bring in this side a little bit too and try to balance it similar to what you had before. Um, it, you know, taking the shot again, maybe move them over just as half a step to their left or right. Um, but otherwise, I think that's good. Now, let's talk a little bit about skin tones. And this is something that I still struggle with from time to time. We've got three different skin tones here, uh, you know, mildly different, I should say. Uh, and we also have some uh, some makeup here, and that can make a really tricky situation. 
Beyond the scope of this uh, of video, I'll just say that a cool tip that I've learned is to use the white balance dropper and come to a neutral area of the face and you want to be looking for a 10-10-10 split. That is a 10 mark difference or 10% difference between your red, your green, and your blue. So for instance, our red starts at 69, then our green should be 10 less, 59, and our blue should be 10 less, 59. And you can see that that part of the skin right there that I'm sampling is just about perfect. If we come over to our other subject, we've got a 54, 41, 36. So in this case, we really need just a tiny bit more green and a little bit less blue to bring that in and make it a little bit um, more in line with kind of a neutral skin tone. And we have uh, this woman over here, a 42, 32, 25. So they're all fairly close um, and they all feel quite good to me. Uh, but we've just got a little bit of an orange there that you want to really kind of watch out for. And um, it's just a matter of tweaking your temp and your tint. And I'll put a link to my favorite skin tutorial uh, profile. It's not mine. Um, right down below, but that is also something that we cover in depth in the Lightroom Guide videos. Uh, otherwise, I think this is nice. I said I I'll bump up the exposure a bit, just a bit. Uh, and one other thing, quick trick I do for skin tones is in the color meter, come into my reds, and you can see this, this woman right here, she's got a little bit of a red and also on the cheeks, and sometimes I'll just move that red hue a little bit in the orange direction and it just kind of helps soften it really works well for sunburn people as well and I'll bump up the luminance as well and so between those two things now we've just kind of softened that red area there and it just looks just a little bit better so there it is on off on or should I, on off okay and now we move on to Crystal's picture. I follow Crystal on Instagram and she creates some amazingly beautiful images this is a fantastic image crystal. Uh, it does look like it was shot outside. Artificial light, but you know, at an hour of the day where that light really kind of blends in with the surroundings um, and doesn't feel like two different competing bits of light. Tiny critique, we have just a little bit of blue here and here that's coming in. I would just crop down just a little bit uh, so that's out. And so we have more of an even, just kind of circular there, a nice vignette. Um, I really don't know what else to say about this image. I think you've shot a fantastic image. We're down at that eye level, which we're not looking down at this child, and that really adds to the impact, and that child is looking up with those big, beautiful eyes. Nice job, Crystal. We've got this shot, which also, eye contact here is fantastic. We're actually a little bit below this young lady's uh, gaze, and it is connecting directly with us. I'll say that personally, I don't love this treatment, this kind of a lower contrast shot. Um, it's definitely been part of post-processing. Uh, it, it's tending a little bit towards dreamy, but doesn't quite pull it off for me. I, I like the more punchier shots. I'm just gonna bring the contrast up. Uh, in this case, it, I don't love what it's doing, but that to me is a better shot where we just have a real clear clarity to the face. Um, because that to me is kind of a timeless shot. It's just a good, clear shot. Whereas something like uh, the shot it came in as, uh, that could feel dated at some point in the future. But positioning, all looks good. Nice one. And then Tony has this shot of uh, the painted room in Greenwich Naval Academy. And this is a cool, this is a very different people looking type of shot. I really like this shot. It's quite fantastic. One of the things that's very important to me in uh, shots is being symmetrical. I said that in the dragonfly and we have uh, almost perfect symmetry here. I think maybe, maybe it needs to tilt back that way a tiny bit, but that's pretty mild. Um, great shutter speed chosen here, two seconds, um, and uh, just there's motion. Uh, gives a sense of what this place is like, what the people are doing here. And I love this couple right here that is stopped and really enjoying for that full two seconds. So that's a great shot. Now we come to the part of the show, the critique, the video, where I say one of these gets to live for a week as the Facebook cover page. And Tony's shot here is fantastic. 
really like this one, but I have to pick Crystal's absolutely pro level, fantastic shot. Nice job, Crystal. Thanks so much to everybody who submitted. And that's all for this week's theme. If you found this video helpful, give it a quick thumbs up. If you would like to submit an image for a future critique, visit photorec.tv slash crits, that's C-R-I-T-S, to learn more about how you can do that and improve your photography. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.